Hey, welcome to our channel. I'm Martina, MS Office Trainer, and today I'm going to show you how to create set of icons in just one minute. Later on, how to take them on the next level, and at the end, how to use the font to actually create a great photo frame. Can't wait to show you all of it. Okay, let's get started. All these icons were created in PowerPoint with just few clicks. Let's do it together. First, we would need to create some text that we will convert into fully editable shapes. We can use built-in types of fonts like, for example, Windings or Webding. Let's start with creating a text box. In Home tab, go to Drawing Group, then select from the drop-down list Text Box. Then just click on the slide to create a box. There are actually two ways of inserting those characters into text box. I will show you both. So first is go to the insert tab and in symbols group select symbol. If that option is not available, make sure you select the text box first. Change the font to windings and select symbols that you want to convert to icons. I will take this one and click insert this and that. Great. When you're done, just close the window. Next step is to create a shape on top of the text. Again, in Home tab, in Drawing Group, select Rectangle and click and drag to create an object. Make sure it covers all inserted characters. Okay, now we'll right-click on it and we're going to send it to back because we want to see everything else that is on the slide. We want to select both objects, but the order is important as formatting of the first selected object will be applied to the final shapes that we create. So I click first on the rectangle and then on the icons. Now the most important part. With both objects selected, go to the Format tab, then Insert Shapes group and click on the Merge Shapes button. Here we have few options in the drop-down list. When you hover over each of them, you will see a preview of the result that you can get. Today we're going to use Fragment options, so just click on it. And as you can see, all characters just converted into the vectorized shapes. All you have to do is delete parts that you don't need anymore, so only the icon shape will be left. And what it's great is that it's fully editable. You can change color fill, outline thickness, and also resize it however you want. To make more icons even more interesting, you can find some fonts online that you can convert to shapes. Here I got font named Animals and Painting Chocolate font. First, let's test out the animal font. Let's insert character in the traditional way. So just create a text box, click on the slide and type G. Select the text and change the font type to Animals. As you can see, we have a great icon of a bird. And this way was so much easier and faster, but you have to know which character responds to which symbol. If you would like to have this font, check our instructions below. Now select the character again, and we're going to make it a little bit bigger. Type 150 in the font size. The next step, as you know, is to create a shape on top of the icon. But this time, we're going to draw a circle. Select it from the list and make sure you hold Shift when you click and drag to draw it perfectly. When it's still selected, just press Ctrl C once to copy it. I will tell you later what it's for. Okay, right click on it and select Send Back. Now select both with Shift Hold. First circle and then a bird. We have to make sure they are perfectly aligned. So go to Arrange Group, then Align and Align Center, and then again Align, Align Middle. Everything is ready, so we can go ahead and convert it into shapes. Go to Format tab and click on the Merge Shape button. Select Fragment. Done! Now select the circle to change the color of it. As you can see, we have two fully editable shapes, a bird and a circle. Time for the trick how to take this icon to the next level. Let's add a self-made shadow. Exciting, right? In the drawing group, select from the drop-down list Freeform Tool. Click to create points on the top of each of those spots. Then it will form a shadow. When you close the shape, it will fill with color automatically. Remember that we copied a circle before? Now it's time to paste it back. Press Ctrl V. 
Align it perfectly on top of our other shapes and select both shadow and the new circle. And we're going to go to the format tab. And this time we will use option insert from merge shapes drop down list. Now we have a smooth edge. Great. Right click on the bird and bring it to the front. Time to make that shadow look like it. Select that shape and in the fill color click on the gradient and then more gradients. The panel will open up and in the gradient fill first select the direction, the first one. Then we need to delete the middle zipper, let's select it and delete. The first one we would select the color pretty dark and the right one would be the color of our circle. Now the icon is ready. Probably you're wondering what can we do with the chocolate painting font. So actually we will use it to create a fancy photo frame. Here I have a photo that I already selected. The first step is to create some text boxes and this time we will need two. In the first text box type big letter I and in the next text box type small letter L. Okay, now select both of them and let's change the font size of it to 300. Then change the font type to painting with chocolate. Now we can just move it around, make it bigger or smaller, rotate it just so we can get a perfect side of the photo. I want to make it look like someone just painted that part. I will move it a little bit and rotate that part. Copy. Perfect. When you finish, just select all those letters, then go to the Format tab and Merge Shapes and select Union. The tool automatically converted those letters to shapes. Now select the picture and hold Shift and click also on our shape. We're gonna again go to the Format tab and from the Merge Shapes drop-down list we're gonna select Subtract. So what it did, it took the first object we selected and cut out the second part that we picked. Merge tool is really powerful. Let me show you one more example of how we can use it with the text. As you can see, I have a photo and some text on it. And honestly, it's not really easy to read it on that busy picture. Let's create first a rectangle exactly above the picture. Then select text and the shape and go to the Format tab, Merge Shapes and Combine. What happened is that actually PowerPoint cut out the text out of our new shape. So let's select the shape now and click on this button and in the panel on the right we're gonna change the Fill Transparency to let's say 15%. Now all we have to do is bring that text to the front, so select it and bring to front we can also add some outline to the shape, so let's click on it and change it to white. In this case, I think it's pretty good. Converting text to outlines, editable shapes instead of text, can be very useful. Why? Imagine that you want to send a presentation to someone who doesn't have the font that you're using. After creating outlines, it will not be needed anymore and you can be sure that the file will look exactly the same on all laptops. It's great for posters, graphics, and some short documents. However, after converting text to shapes, you cannot modify the text anymore. So it's always good to have a copy saved somewhere. You can still have the text box with the text on the slide. Just turn off the visibility in selection pane. You can then go back to the original text anytime, modify it, and again convert it to shapes when ready. Thank you for watching our video. If you have any comment, leave it below. And if you liked it, don't forget to subscribe.